which one is that one? Numenera. Into the night. Into the deep, into the night. GM deck. Don't mess with Cthulhu. God, the closer you get to it, the more I want it. And like, look, we want you to send go out to this uh, this billionaire's house. Here's an invite. Uh, look for something strange that might happen. Now, it's sort of a test. You don't know really what's going to happen. You figure this is just like working with the CIA or the FBI. What could go wrong, right? Okay. So you're at this billionaire's house right now, and it, it, it's a pretty interesting place. Very uh, eccentric. Lots of strange uh, pictures on the walls. And the, the billionaire's like, just go go explore. Go explore the. Uh, you know, before dinner happens, you can go upstairs, you can look at the photographs, the pictures, anything that looks interesting, just tell you know, examine. You know? So you're on the second floor and you come to the hallway and you see this odd picture on the wall. And uh, it's it's bound in, in gold frame and it has a bit of a shimmer. Uh, you know, Louise, uh, you're so your character's like 40 years old. You kind of remember the malls in the early 90s and those pictures and you just cross your eyes, you can see a 3D image. It looks a little like that, a little funky. Uh, but you're kind of looking at this thing. Does anyone want to examine it, kind of mess with it? Sure. I'll do it. So. All right. So your character is a spinner. Uh, so the way that, uh, the, the stat pools work, you have three stat pools, might, speed, and intellect. Mm -hmm. And these are things that you spend, okay? So... Uh, what you would do is, if you're going to make an action, I'm going to declare a difficulty. So I'm going to say, you just to investigate this, just to look at this, okay. uh, it's a difficulty of three. Okay. Now, you, as a player, get to kind of negotiate back with the difficulty reduced. So you would look at your skills or your abilities. My skills to see. The seed. So you're not, you're, you can't really just see the picture, so that's not going to lower the skill. Uh, but that's okay. 
uh, you can still do it. And one way you can kind of make it better is you can take your intellect pool and you can reduce it uh, by spending, it's called uh, spending effort. You can reduce it by three minus your edge. So it always costs uh, uh, three to spend the effort and it's minus whatever your edge is makes it cheaper. So you can cost but, so it's going to be two, right? Yep. So you're going to have 11 points left and you spend two points. Okay. So you uh, now it drops difficulty from a three to a two. So the way difficulty is, is you take whatever difficulty is, multiply by three, that's what you have to beat. So you roll a 20 sider and you have to essentially, you have to beat the difficulty two is a six or higher. Six or higher. Yep. Okay. 11. So 11. Okay. Right. So, so there's definitely something weird with this picture. Do you feel like maybe it's not a, a, a full frame picture at all. Your hand could go through this picture. You can feel on the other side. You see some shimmering on the outside of this picture. And, and you smell a little bit, actually, too close. You smell like, like gunpowder. Okay. Uh, guys, I smell gunpowder. And um, you want me to stick my hand through it? <laughs> Better you than me. So. You can say no and just walk the table. No, 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 no. I, I feel lucky. Uh, you get lucky. lucky. So I'm going to stick my hand in the, the picture, see what happens. All right. As you stick your hand through, um, you, you, you start to feel a shimmer and a shake all around you. Okay. As do uh, Luis and Leopold, who probably right now are saying, why did we even go in this going? You know? <laughs> and so there's like a weird phase shift, and you now think you're on the other side of this picture. And you're looking at the same picture, but it looks like a photograph taped to a wall, and you're looking around, and you're in a weird structure. It looks very sterile. There's spacesuits on a wall. Uh, there are, on, on the floor, is just grating. Uh, and the gunpowder you smell is this weird, uh, like, like just powdery substance all over the floor. And you look at a small window to your left, and you see the landscape of the moon. Oh, okay. What? You've kind of shifted through the picture to, to somewhere else, and this picture sort of gateway. Okay. The... And immediately as you're kind of standing there, kind of, and, and, and you look down, you notice you all look a little different. Like, as you come here, your clothes have shifted a bit. You're now not wearing your, your luxurious tuxedos. You're wearing, uh, like, sort of space jumpsuits, and you see, like, NASA badges on your, on your shirt. And two, two of these guys kind of come in, uh, look at Stanley, and they, they're, they're, they're wearing, wearing space suits, they have, they have their helmets on, they take their helmets off, like, did, did we get like new recruits and we didn't know about this? Are you here to help us out? The Steve, yeah, I'll say yes, we're here to help you out. I don't know who's going to stay for this Sorry. Uh, yes, uh, I'll try to use the casino skill. All right, cool. say that, Yeah, we're extra recruits here to help you. <laughs> all right, so we're going to see the difficulty of two for this. Drops to a one, so you do all three or higher. And how you determine the difficulty again? It's just whatever the difficulty level is times three. Two, so I right. failed. So you missed it. Now we have an option here. Uh, well, actually, most of the time in this game you have XP. No one has an experience point, so it's going to be a failure. Uh, but if you have XP, you can spend the XP. All right, so by, by kind of missing, he's like, all right, no, you're, you're, you guys aren't supposed to be here. I, I'm pretty sure about this. I don't know how you got here, but uh, I'm going to have to call down and, 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 and deal with this. Does anyone else want to try something? All right, cool. Go for it. So it's the same difference. So he's is that a level two creature, so everything's a difficulty two for him? Ten. All right. So what do you say? They say, listen, we're exactly where we need to be. Don't, don't ask any more questions. All right, so he like, locks eyes with you, and he's just like nodding. Like, you're, you're, you're putting it on thick here, you know? Okay, so you're here to examine the anomaly then? Yes. I'm not lying. <laughs> not a good liar. Okay. Um, all right, that's that's fine. Um, come over here. And he goes, and he says, just don these space suits, and I'll take you to the anomaly. Okay. So he puts you all in, in these suits, he gets these out, they're full astronaut suits, and you can like throw these things on and, and just start heading off if you want. Yeah, let's do that. I'm all for it. Alright, so for, with, uh, let's go for equipment for a second. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, background connection abilities. Sorry, so some of these have abilities here that are listed. Uh, it's important to point out here is that you have one here that uh, here, so if you were to shoot something, you could spend points to do extra damage. Uh, you can use pretty much armor, any weapon you find. 
uh, you have some abilities, like you can fast talk people. Okay. So you could have kind of talked him uh, out of this in a different manner. You can spin and curse, you can actually make them do things better. Uh, you can, manipulators already in your skills, you have this as a manipulator. And then you have some skills about the kind of same Form thing. Lucky, you can, uh, I guess that's uh, the page core book. I yep. don't have that. So. But you do have the spin identity, so you could actually spend points to be somebody else, too. So I, can, I can play with someone else. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just to throw those out there. I know this is a quick demo, but there, but there that is an option there. Okay, so he takes you, puts the spacesuits on, and he starts taking you out. Like, let's go, and he, he starts marching out. You all go through the. Uh, the in the airlock, and uh, I'm gonna throw something called a GM intrusion. This is a core mechanic of the Cypher system. A GM intrusion is, I as a GM don't roll anything. If, uh, if you're getting attacked, you roll a the speed defense roll. If you're getting uh, doing something, you roll an action. The okay. GM rolls nothing in this game, unless I'm rolling for random items to throw in. The way I interact with the game is I throw these things called GM intrusions, which means that I'm going to offer you experience points for the permission to take over the game, if you will. Now, if you had XP, you can turn it down, you don't, you gotta take it, so you're in the airlock, and I'm gonna throw a GM intrusion, you can't turn it down, it's a group intrusion, so you all write down one XP, typically if it was an individual uh, intrusion, it would just be one, and then you get to give it one to somebody else, alright, who's seen the Martian? Yes, in the Martian? No. Oh, oh shoot, right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. The book yeah. is better. Sorry. The book is better. I agree. By far. All right. So he goes to seal the, the air lock off, and he goes to go to the outside to unseal it, and you all are like, whoom, as something uh, sealing the airlock to the rest of this moon base disconnects, and just starts blowing the entire airlock around the ground, and you are all falling around. We need everyone to make uh, might defense rolls from getting bounced around. So, so it's a nine, right? But we don't really forget the number here. Okay. So I'm gonna say it's a difficulty of uh, four might defense roll. So what so if you're trained in might defense, you're not, your speed defense, you're not, and you're not, you either drop it to a three. You can spend might effort if you want, which is spending three points minus your edge to drop the difficulty from a four to a three, or you can just take your chance at the roll and try to roll a twelve or higher. I'm gonna spend it. <laughs> So you're gonna spend, uh, you've had two points of might, and then, so why don't you make the first roll? I only have one die, sorry. No, it's okay. All right, so you're good. You're, it's good you did that, because you would have missed it by one point. So go ahead. So I'll have to lose three, right? Yep. All right, let's do that. So I'm at six right now. Yep. So. Eight. All right, so uh, you missed it by, by one. How you have the XP, if you want to you spend the XP to re-roll. Yes, okay. I'll do that. <laughs> 17. 17, good deal. All right, and I'll do the same thing. So I'll go down to six. <laughs> and I'll shoot for what, a nine? You're shooting a nine or higher. Nine. 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 Perfect. So, good deal. All right, so you all kind of like get buffeted around this thing. Well, it looks like the guy with you is not doing so well. He's like holding his helmet on. His helmet kind of comes off. He breathes vacuum for a second. He's like kind of freaking out of it. But uh, so he, he, when the thing comes to a stop, you guys are like 600 yards away. This thing blew off like a balloon that just inflated. And he's just like barely gasping for air. He's like, there's the anomaly. And he, he points out and uh, you see this weird sphere. Actually, you can see it down here. This weird sphere on the ground that uh, is, you don't see the, ignore the middle of this. You just see the metal part, okay? It's just uh, <laughs> sticking out, kind of alien looking, but again, you started your day, you know, at probably like a Mickey D's or something, going over this thing, you didn't expect to be in space. So, uh, that's the anomaly. It's, it's just something affecting our world with that. You use someone, you were sent here to do this job, you gotta go check that out. You want me to try? <laughs> uh, can we actually talk to each other? Oh, yeah, yeah. Something? You have like a little thing, you know, whatever they're uh, Radios. I go and investigate or search around it. Are you getting out of your your, 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 uh, your, your airlock pod? Oh, we're still in the airlock. Sure, okay. I'll get out of the airlock pod. All right, so you're charging, and you're definitely on the moon. You look up, you see the earth above you. Uh, you see the sun here, look at that. Uh, it's kind of surreal. 
Alright, so you have you have arch over plump plump. And yeah, this thing's just sticking out of the ground. Uh, it has a weird blue shimmer on the outside, and there's a golden glow. Looks like a view plate in the middle. Um, can I see what the, the blue part around it is? Or? Sure. So around the edge, you get a bluish mist. And I want you to make a roll just kind of like perception type. So how we do that is, any, in any skill in this game, they're all based on your might, speed, or intellect. But there's no actual skill list. So you just what makes sense. Intellect makes sense for perception. It wouldn't be speed or might. So unless you're trained in it, you're just going to make a roll using your intellect pool. You can spend nothing and just make a roll. Like something like this, I wouldn't spend anything. Else. Just give it a roll. Okay. And this is just, and you determine what I yep. see, right? It's a okay. difficulty of two. Fourteen. So fourteen. Hand lead. You think you remember some of your training on in the estate, of speaking of uh, these portal keys and stuff to other recursions, and you feel attuned to this. Like you already went through this. You feel like this is something similar, but you may have some control going through a second time. Okay. So I tell him, hey guys, well, I guess the other guy can hear us, right? Mm -hmm. right. This feels the same as what happened before. So let's do it. Let's go through. Okay. All right. And the guy says anything to us, or he's just like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'd like you all to, you're going to do this thing called, it's called translation. So in the strange, as you go from world to world, which you can do that, it's you translate from world to world, and based on the, you have to roll for this. Now you would need usually a, 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 a paradox to start the translation, but you can do it with spinners. So you're going to a level two world. So someone in your group needs to start the translation process. It's pretty much just like psychically attuning yourself to this sphere. Okay. Um, the, the higher the intellect, the better, I guess? Or? Well, it's, it's not like, intellect is like a pool of skills. So definitely I would go for someone that may have points to spend. So he has 16 to spend. Yeah, and I already used two of mine. Okay. It didn't play two to go here. So, uh, I mean, you're going to make a six spend, or five. I'll spend uh, some effort. There. Sure. Make it a, almost a guarantee. So what does this go down? You're going to spend three points minus your edge, so two total. So if this is guaranteed, it's at over oh, one. Oh, yeah, if he gets a three, it's 16. Got it. Okay. <laughs> this time as you start to translate, you feel more like you know what you're doing. Uh, so you start the process, this mental attitude, <laughs> and as you translate through, you feel like you're gaining abilities going through. So flip your sheets over, okay? You actually attune and translate through, and you're now on the deck. Floating over this world, you're on the deck of a grand Victorian steampunk uh, like airship. Okay? And, uh, and and you now have gained one of these uh, foci. So if you look in the back here, uh, it's gonna be the, the Steam London one. Uh, so for instance, you now have solved mysteries, you have leads, you have works the system. And, uh, okay, this computer the programming. Computer. <laughs> so, and the computer programming works like a clockwork computer programming. Garbage, different and stuff here in the Steam world, okay? okay? Now, if you were to travel back uh, to a different world, like here's Cannibal Wasteland, this would be something like going to uh, uh, the zombie apocalypse, you can take that. So as in the strange, your characters shift their focus from world to world, and they're always being a little bit different. Uh, Numenera and other types of games, it's kind of set. You have one, it's yours for life. In the screen, it's a mirror. So, so, this is my starting equipment now, so I don't have the stuff that I have earlier, correct? Right? Correct. You now have, uh, you have whatever it's here. So, uh, it'll say here what you have. Uh, so, you have whatever the gear is there. So, you street clothing, and you've got He has a smart, a smart um, sort of umbilical or flute or pen knife. Okay. So, um, you see on the, on the deck of this ship, you see there is a, a weird kind of uh, eccentric paint, you know, drawing these vistas. And it is metallic, like, frame behind the front of it. It looks a lot like this. And you see other pictures kind of lined up, and it's covered in paint. You have this easel with that weird bluish glow. And, uh, and, 
and you see one that looks like this, but it, it, it's a it's a purple landscape with like weird tentacle bees coming out. You see one that looks like feudal Japan, and he's like, I have visitors. Hello, welcome to my workshop. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Do you do you wish to to buy a painting? How much are they? Uh, I, I, they're, they're 300 pounds. Work the system. I guess I only have 50 pounds. So it's okay. to help you do this, but they blacked out, they don't remember. I have a debt, so... They don't know that. They really? That's that's terrible. Why would they do that to you? <laughs> I feel bad now. I can work through these more so. Alright, so... Say yes! The There's nothing guy. to lose! Really? <laughs> I have debts. Are you asking for this on credit? <laughs> See, my pictures are the finest pictures in all of the, in all of the, the worlds, all the recursions. I, I, I paint the worlds I've seen and, I, and strange folks buy them and it's, it's a good deal. It's okay if I look at your pictures first before I decide? I... Oh, yes. Well, let me show you this one here. And he goes and he walks over and he goes to show you the one with the weird tentacle background. And he's like, this is a, a great picture. This is a, a world uh, called Gatherum. And on Gatherum, uh, it's pretty much ruled by octo octopoids. Can I examine the picture? Oh, yes, let me, hold on, I'll bring it to you. Are you okay with that? Yes, I am right. okay with that. Right, so he goes over and he picks up this portrait, and uh, I'm going to throw a GM intrusion at you. Okay. You want the intrusion? Sure. All right. Go uh, for it. So a big gust of wind hits the airship, and the airship shifts a bit, and kind of kind of tumbles to the side, and he kind of falls forward on this picture in slow motion. Theme song plays in the background of Dread, and he hits the ground. The picture kind of breaks, but something comes out of the picture. You see one tentacle flop out, and a second one, and a third one, and about seven more. And as he kind of falls into the picture through, the tentacles sort of appear and yank this weird tentacle beast onto the deck. So it, it looks kind of like uh, Davy Jones's face without a face. You know? Got it. Um, and it's just kind of flopping around, and we're going into combat. Yay. So everyone needs to roll initiative. So initiative is a speed action. So we level up, right? So you get the GM intrusion, you get one XP. Then they get two, right? Then so you get to give one to somebody else. Oh, okay, so... Okay, I'll let him the first thing, he's going to attack you first. So okay. you give it to him. Okay. So everyone rolls on initiative. So if that's a skill, sure if you're trained in it, you are. <laughs> so this creature is a level three creature. So essentially, you're all trying to beat its level. So, so when it's right, you start. So you need, you're you're rolling against a difficulty of two because you're training an issue. And so that's you, a nine or no? So six. six or better. Six or better. And this is just determining if you're going before or after the creature. So you go before the creature. You need to roll a nine or better. I'm just going to roll. Yep. No. You go after. No, you roll one. A one's no. automatic to you, Mr. Unless you want to spend the XP and you roll one. Which you can do. You can I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can hold a second. You're already uh, in dead. You don't want to get more worse. Definitely up here. Fifteen. Okay. All right. So uh, you're gonna go first. So this thing looks. It's locked eyes on Yuki, and unless it just is very interested in dragging Yuki to whatever tentacle place it's going after this. Yeah, yeah the girl. I figured. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So now you can you have, you have weapons. You have a a gauntleted fist. There we go. I'll punch it. All right. So you have this 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 big steampunk. I think like seventeen of them here today so far. It's big steampunk power fist. Like the fist actually comes off like a battering ram. So uh, you can go ahead and attack this thing. So it's a difficulty three to hit it. So you can go a nine or higher. All right. I'm gonna spend some might. You can spend might. Yep. All right. So just drop might to a three. So I gotta get a six or Anything that was... That's a hit. All right. So you do four points of damage. In the Cypher system, uh, damage is all done by uh, the weapon type, light, medium, or heavy. So two, four, or six. Actually, how high you roll in this die can augment it. So if you roll 17, 18, or 19, it's an additional one, two, or three points. Or 20, it's an additional four points. So combat's pretty fast. <laughs> All right, so you you slam this. There is a giant spray of like sea foam, and I'm sure it's bacteria laden all over your arm. It's kind of nasty. All right, uh, next up, Yuki. This thing is it's, it's like it's like coming at you. Now, since, I'm gonna say it's got its legs. 
kind of wrapped around your feet already, and that's the intrusion. So any activity you're going to do right now that doesn't involve escaping is going to be a, a higher level. Okay. Um, so he went first. What did he go next? Because he went after the... You, you, oh, yeah. so I'm sorry. Yeah. You're at, I apologize. He's the one who beat my role. I rolled I'm Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're yeah. Our head. So what is this minus one step? It's, 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 it means it's, it's easier done. to hit with your light knife. So light weapons are easier to hit with because they're light. Like, and uh, you know more agile, so you would actually reduce the difficulty to a two just using that weapon. Okay. And now, if I attack with my medium, that's it's a difficulty three, and you can spend speed at speed. Yep. I'm gonna do that. Okay. And you have a point of edge, and you can actually pay extra point of speed if you want to do one more point of damage, but you have pierce. Sure. Yeah. Go all. Yeah. Why not? It's a Kill him before the ten is put in. Alright, so 16, Almost you're going to cause uh, 5 points of damage. So you shoot this thing like, inches away from where you just steampunk gauntlet is this thing. Which, which probably looks like a Gatling pistol, I'm imagining. And it looks, it looks very irate for a giant ball of tentacles. I mean, you, you haven't seen that in the past, but if you ever did, this is how they look when they're irate. And it's its turn. It's just going to kind of lash you. It's grabbed your feet. It's going to lash you. What's the intrusion? It's a difficulty of 4 to not be, like, tentacle lashed. So you're going to roll a speed defense roll. So you trained in speed defense, and you're not. Okay. So it's a 12 or higher. Anything with advantage does? Uh, it, 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 it does a plus on any focus ability? Yes. So, let's see here. Your focus abilities right now are going to be oh, it's a computer half the impossible oh, okay. and computer program, which you can do that. There is a big difference engine on the deck of the ship. You can access the engineering of the ship well, on your turn. On my turn. Okay, so it's his turn now. Yes. So he's going to attack me, right? Yep, so you're just going to roll a speed. You can spend effort on this. You can spend two points of speed effort. Yeah. Uh, okay. Two speed. Three minus your edge. So that's ten. Ten. Because it's minus one. Yep. Okay. And this is now, uh, what was the difficulty on this? You, now it's going to be a nine. Nine instead of 12. 12. Okay. 17. 17. All right, so um, as it's trying to lash you, you like, kind of just tumble to the side and it lashes like, the deck of the airship. And now you're free. So you're up. It is Yuki's turn. Sure. So what was this thing you said? I the computer thing you were yeah, talking so about? The ship works with this difference engine. It's kind of like a, like almost like a giant disc, an abacus mixed with uh, also weird rotors and stuff. You can actually... You think that you could probably, because you, when you, you transit another world, you get some of the knowledge in this world into your brain uploaded. You can probably control the ship if you can hack it, which means you can make it do whatever you want to do. Look to the side, dump a tentacle off the side, whatever. Okay, what I'm gonna attempt to do is to control the ship and flip it upside down for a second. All right, that's great. <laughs> They're gonna love you for this. Uh, I'm gonna let that's... them know beforehand to hold uh, on to the ship. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna say that, but I wanted to see if I pass first and then okay. let them know. So, so with your, your skills uh, and hack the impossible, you're dropping the difficulty. If you wanna spend the three points of speed effort, um, so this is going to be with speed. It's going to cost you three points of speed just to do this, okay? So just drop that to a seven. And that's for hack the impossible. Okay. That means it's pretty much any computer system. You just have full access to it. So you kind of put your hands in this thing and you just know where every single piece goes. Nice. So why don't you give me a roll based on the difficulty of the ship. It's a difficulty three. Actually, you spent the points. So it says hacking impossible is three intelligent points. Oh, I'm sorry. So it wasn't speed. It was endless. So it's the other one. Okay. Yeah. So I was, I lost three, so I'm at ten, and then this would be uh, eight. Okay. All right, so since you, uh, you have full access to this thing, so why don't you give me a roll for intellect just for control of your actual flip. You're, you're connected to it. Let's roll for the flip. So this is going to be a speed base thing. So this is the speed base. Yep. Okay. So that, that for me to do that, that was the three points yep. there. So now to do this, I have to roll. Okay. Once again, how long was he Four. Can I read more? Yes, you can. Um, your next demo starts at one. We're almost done. Yes. We'll see what happens to these two guys. Yes. Come on. Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. You guys both know this is flipping, so you guys, you guys still need to make a speed roll. So uh, it's a difficulty two. Drop to a one. You can spend speed effort to not roll at all, or you can take the rolls. You can take the roll. Take the roll. 
That's a 20. All right, now, special things happen at 20. You can do something awesome. Like, for instance, you could grab his hand and hold hands as this happens and you cannot roll. <laughs> Is it worth the hand holding? Is the monster going to be able to make an attempt to stay on the... Uh, Oh, yeah. I'm gonna say he spent so many of his points, I'm gonna let it just flop off. Okay. All right, so yeah, I'll save him then. Okay, because I was gonna try and like... Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> no, it's okay, I'm sorry, I don't want to be... You're gonna grab him by the two forward. Like drop him the like shirt. So you can just start singing. You want to sing as this happens? I want to hold you right. I can see your role. We need to sing your role. Roll you know, you need to go Arnold on it, so you come with me if you want to live. 14, okay. So, there's this beautiful just sound of music as Leopold Watts, the entertainer, just, <laughs> just belting out this beautiful song, all the while Yuki is kind of tranking the ship, and the ship is up, and you hear a big flop as the tentacle thing hits the roof, and kind of slides off the side, and falls down into the void below. As you right the ship, you kind of have a choice to make. You can either go back to the estate and report on where these pictures were coming from, or you become steampunk pirates. It's kind of up to you. I think we should become steampunk steam pirates. Yeah. yeah. So that's the strange. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. So I hope you guys had a good time. Yes, these campaigns sir. are kind Thank of crazy. Much. I had a campaign, this a long running campaign, where we started off um, as just agents, and they ended up. I blended the Dark Sun campaign setting with Star Wars. And it ended with like the Evan Hawk traveling into Tyr to defeat a sorcerer king who was Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> so they, it, it really is like whatever your head can throw in there if you're up for that kind of kit bashing. And that's kind of how I began. So Numenera, uh, also a great game. It's a weird, weird science feel to it. I put this little anime feel to it. And then the Cyber Stim itself is the core system. You don't need to have the Cyber Stim robot to run the screen for Numenera. They run on their own. So, so what is the Cyber System. Cyber system is the, this. Yeah. This is cyber system. Okay. It is, but, but the cyber system core book is for running uh, games like Gods of the Fall, Predation, things that aren't out yet. The Strange and Numenera are complete rule books. If you went and picked up the Strange book and the third shelf up there, that is the game. You don't need the cyber system core book to run that. That has everything in there. This, what happened was with Numenera and, and the Strange were coming so popular that they, but people were making their own campaign settings, the Cypher System rule would let you just take this rules engine and put it in anything else you want. Anything else. Also, it's like a boost yep. or, or expansion in a way. Like yeah. For different games. yeah, a lot of the rules are similar to those. If you like the theme of the Strange, I get the Strange. If you like Numenera, I get Numenera. You want Any to your own um, advice for a GM? Like, for this type of game? Uh, the way I GM these games, they're, they're pretty rules light, uh, so I kind of go fast and loose. Keep with the GM intrusions and keep the XP flowing, um, and and don't get like stuck on on, on, on rules. That's how I kind of run. It. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. No, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time. No problem. You like it? Similar to that? You like it? I have new Manera. Yeah. I know. It's just you know getting. I actually had it on my singing, yeah. <laughs> I wanna hold you. There's somewhere. Oh, yeah. Well, he should have went straight on or come with me if you want to leave. <laughs> Get to the chapel. <laughs> Coolstuff.com. Look at the shields and stop signs over there. $20. Yeah, see, there you go. Seven bucks for
It's got a lot of games here. Japanese specials. This is pretty. Santa Cole Cthulhu place. Yeah, it's a very of popular game now. Hey. <laughs> the, the race plate? Yeah. It's, that's one of the things I was thinking about getting. So it's dual. Such a player seven. We should play that together. No, we need to get to the 400s. Let's yeah. just do it. Let's just this cut it. It's. We can take a break, get some lunch, you know. It's 150. Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. I mean, I still want to look for at least the uh, more, more machines at. I want to see that. Because I want to buy their units before they sell out. Because they already sell out like a bunch of stuff. Though. Dude, look at that thing over there. Mike's creepy. Oh, that's, I think that's League of Legends, actually. Is that the Tay Bear? Oh, no, it's Mount Oh, this is Lord. I want to play this game, too. Freaking awesome looking. Yeah, that's one of the Lord's miniatures. It's actually like... You can play the game with just a basic like, playing card, it's like actual playing card, and uh, power on the Dude! That's a uh, fantasy flight. Shadow run, Rafael, there's shadow run. I know. You just said that, didn't you? Yeah. Sorry, got distracted, it was doom. My brain just caught up to what you were saying. We're getting close. There it is, the 400s. One punch! There you go, Rafael. Pokemon. Your favorite Pokemon. Um, Ryan. Ryan, I want to check something out really quick. This is the 400s. What was the booth? Paul Cthulhu. I got the Keeper book, and you got the Investigation Handbook. Rick? Rick? Or the Investigator Hearts. And the Keeper screen. The Investigator Hearts would be there on the top. This is the whole set? Actually, I got him right here now. <laughs> he lied to me. Bait and switch. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have the whole set. Is it the whole set now? Right there. It's right there, dude. Is this new RuneQuest? No. Okay. This is RuneQuest Classic. The new RuneQuest is not going to be out until next year. We got three ages. Sorry. How much are the Gorantha guys? The Guide to Gorantha two volume set is $200. And we throw in a half. Should take 
credit cards? Absolutely. Oh, negative original. I think I'm going to go ahead and have this. I've seen it, but no, I actually want this. Yeah, let me get you a fresh drink right now. Of course, Sandy was here to smell. Oh, Sandy's here if you want him to sign it. In the white t shirt. And Greg is also at the convention, not here right now, as is Jeff. So if you want all three of them to sign it. Oh, wow, that's. We also can offer, if you, if you don't want to carry this around but you'd like it signed, oh, yeah. okay. is uh, once you bought it, we'll put your name with a sticker on it, we'll keep it here, we'll get them to sign it, then you come back and pick it up. Okay, like when? You could do it end of today or okay, any other. As long as, well, it's yours, so when do you want to pick it up? It will be in the back of the booth sign. You come up and identify yourself and have a sticker with your name on it. If you want, if you want to do it, I'll be right back. 